Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm going to talk about the Sound Blaster Katana V2 Soundbar. This is $330, and it's designed both for home theater and gaming and PC use. There's a lot of crazy stuff that this have, has that I didn't really know until I started using it. So hopefully by the end of this review, you can learn a little bit more about it because there was more than meets the eye, even through the extensive list that was on the uh, Sound Blaster website. So uh, $330, it has 126 watts of continuous power, 252 peak. To some people that may be a lot or a little. I can tell you this thing gets crazy loud, like the volume max is out at 50, and 15 or to 20 is enough to get you in trouble in an apartment building. So if you play this thing very loudly, this does have enough power to where your neighbors are probably going to know what you're listening to. So it definitely hits pretty hard. Now I'm going to talk about all the sound quality in more detail. Um, it does come with this subwoofer. The subwoofer does not have its own powered connection. It uses a standard RCA sub cable, which is not removable on the sub side. It's just an RCA plug here, but there's an amplifier built into this for that subwoofer. So they're designed to work cohesively. You can leave the sub disconnected. It'll work fine. It just won't sound as good, obviously, because you're losing a ton of the bass. Um, but either way, so you get a really nice remote control in the box. This remote has tons of buttons on it. Not only can you adjust your volume, play, pause, you can adjust your subwoofer level, how bright the screen display uh, brightness is up front, RGB colors, which I customized this. I'll talk about that in a moment. All your inputs and then custom buttons at the bottom. So originally when I made this review, um, this was I started with like this whole unboxing, probably would have been a five or 10 minute intro to the video and I talked about a lot of the specs, but now that I've used this for a while and I realize how many things I can do with it, I'm like, holy crap, there's no way I can fit that in. It would be too long. So you miss the unboxing. However, it does come with wall mount brackets, so you can wall mount this, very low profile on the wall. It doesn't stick out far or really give you any adjustment for tilt, but they are L brackets and they are included. Otherwise, it's designed to rest on your desk. Now, there is a nice little angle on this uh, sound bar. How does that coming out? Does that look kind of crazy? Um, it's, it sits on, it's designed to really sit in front of you based off the width and the way the speaker placement is. It works well as a near field sound bar, which means I'm only uh, sitting about four feet away, three to four feet away typically, depending on your desk and how you're sitting. So there's a ton of stuff that this thing does. Now it has a lot of inputs on the back. So I'm gonna unplug this. You have your power input. This is the subwoofer output. And again, the sub is not powered. Uh, optical input, so you can hook up a television or an older game console, um, anything you wanna feed it with optical, even a computer technically, although use USB. Aux input, so it has a 3.5 millimeter analog input. And then you have the USB audio in, which is USB-C. That cable is included. SXFI out. If you buy one of the creative uh, headphones or headsets that use SXFI, they have a, a special transmitter. You can plug directly into this, and the sound bar can actually store the SXFI profile on it and then, in turn, calibrate the audio output of your uh, headset as well. The only thing that was weird, this says HDMI out, and then it says ARC. So I don't know if that was confusing or I, I guess they say out because it's supposed to go out to the TV. You're not connecting, um, you know, like a game console to this because there's only one HDMI input. So what this means is ARC stands for audio return channel. If you have a newer TV that has ARC and you connect HDMI with it, when you turn on your TV, the audio will then be sent from the TV to the sound bar. Now this does not have HDMI pass through, so you will be occupying the HDMI port on your TV to get the audio to your soundbar. If you don't want to do that, you can always use optical. The only difference is you don't get the lip sync capability that ARC gives you, which basically means it auto lines up the uh, your lips moving, if you will, with the sound. So there's no weird delay. And then the big kicker with this, which I think got me really excited because again, I was originally treating this more like a home theater sound bar and I'm like, okay, I'll do the gaming stuff towards the end. I wanted to hear how, how it performed for movies and music. This headphone jack is a combo port, TRRS, which means it supports microphone. That's why I have the Epos H6 Pro headset next to me. Now it works astonishingly well, um, so well, that a lot of people probably won't need much more than this to power a gaming headset. So if you are using this for gaming, there it's really nice to have a nice clean aesthetic. 
in the front behind your keyboard and you can just plug your gaming headphones into that. I'm gonna get into the sound quality tuning and, and all that stuff later, or at least explain some of the pros and cons and how that works. Um, but I wanna go over some of the basics as far as controls go. So when you turn this on, again, I mentioned the TV will auto mute its own speakers because of HDMI arc and CEC and all that. What that means is your TV volume on your TV remote can actually change the volume on this when you're using arc. Obviously you could still use the one that's included. But you get your power, you can press and hold uh, to pair Bluetooth to the creative apps, um, plus minus volume source. Mode, because let's see if I can get it on the screen, it looks like I should turn it back on. Uh, mode will give you uh, movies, music, game mode, and then no effects. So that's how I used it for a long time because I had no idea how much you can customize in the app. Um, and in most cases, I preferred the music, mo or sorry, the movie mode. Music elevates your treble just a little bit and it plays around with the phasing and soundstage. Uh, game mode has a less wide soundstage. It actually tightens it up a little bit, which is good because you want that more for localization so you know where things are coming from. Um, and then off honestly didn't sound that great on the speaker side. Off works really well for headphones, um, but either way. Now the SXFI button, this does not work until you go through the app and pair your phone to it to upload a picture of your ear, the front of your face, you get both ears, the front of your face, and then it custom tunes the audio performance of this um, for your specific head and ear shape, as well as your headphone mapping. So um, I'm gonna get into sound quality right off the bat and talk about how this performs. So this is a plastic sound bar, like there's metal inside, it's heavy, but the you can tell that the enclosures for the speakers are plastic, because um, I listen to a lot of audio products. I have so many speakers that I haven't reviewed yet, but I really should. You can hear the difference with a wooden enclosure versus a plastic enclosure versus whatever it is. They have different properties to them and resonance. So you can tell that these are in a plastic enclosure. It doesn't sound as bad as a lot of other gaming products I've heard, uh, and especially in this size, but it does have a little bit of an impact on like reverbs and again, resonance, usually more noticeable in like the three to five kilohertz region. Does it sound bad? No. Uh, in fact, that sub really, really pounds. Like you don't have to max out the bass to get a lot out of it. And the port is really clean too because when you're having a lot of bass, you don't hear the air uh, rushing in and out or chuffing, if you will. So it's just like, it's clean. And it gets pretty deep. This is rated to go down to 50 hertz. I would prefer it to go closer to 30 to 40, but at this price range and for the size of the sub, I think 50 is normal. For real movie listening, the LFE channel or low frequency channel goes from 80 hertz and below. So you would think that 80 to 50 um, is a little bit narrow. They have this sub tuned to go into higher frequencies as well because uh, these drivers don't really go that deep. However, they're tuned uh, fairly well together. Now Sound Blaster uses individual amplifiers inside for their drivers. So it's not like it's a shared power output that's just tapped in parallel to all the speakers. So they claim to do that for improved sound quality and performance. And it does sound pretty good. I, again, um, I really enjoyed this. Now I watched a few movies on it and it's not going to rival a full speaker system, but it's still pretty immersive. And when you consider again how compact this is, it does a good job. Now because this is more narrow, if you're sitting on the far side of a room, let's say you're 15 feet away, you're not gonna get the stereo imaging as much because that's a physical limitation with a sound bar of this size. It's not like it's a bad sound bar, it's just small. I think it better benefits a desk. However, I'll show a clip real quick. Um, when you play games like uh, Gran Turismo, I use that in a lot of other examples for my headset reviews, um, you really, it's nice to capture the, the hum and the, and the vibrations of the engine and a TV speaker will never do that. Sometimes I don't wanna wear headphones just for a racing game because you know, I don't need it. I don't need to have the full positional accuracy. I actually just want to hear and feel the engine. And this thing kicked ass in that regard. I absolutely love the way it sounded for that. And I could turn it up. So here's a quick clip of me playing so you can hear what I'm talking about.
So that was pretty wild. And I'm actually gonna be reviewing that Thrustmaster uh, steering wheel you saw during that video. So when it came to FPS and gaming on the competitive side, this no speaker, in my opinion, is going to touch headphones for imaging when it comes to FPS. There's just such a huge advantage. If you have a true five channel or seven channel system, that's your only chance you're gonna get, and that's only if you go to louder volumes. So uh, what this does, so what's interesting about this, I'm gonna start bleeding into the whole SXFI thing. Um, the way this system works, there's digital signal processing inside DSP that is changing the phasing and timing of all four drivers to create a virtual, let's say holographic soundstage, kind of like what spatial audio does to headphones and earbuds. The idea of that is to have better separation and placement of objects around you so um, it should basically expand beyond the sound bar's physical space um, to make it sound like sounds are coming from spots that you wouldn't think a speaker is there. So it did a good job there. Now, was I able to hear footsteps as easily as a headphone or a headset? No. But in a lot of games, it actually did a surprisingly good job. And when you factor in the sound quality and the tuning, this is about as good as it gets on a compact chassis like this. Now, when it came to music and movies, I, I really have no complaints over it. I think because it has so many gamer features, I can't think treat this as a standard, you know, $330 home theater only soundbar. You're not just paying for pure audio amplification and speakers. And I think it still sounds good. I think it sounds comparable to a two to $250 dedicated home theater soundbar from someone like Samsung or Yamaha, um, not bad, but the real kicker on this is the virtual sound processing and the phasing and all that. Now, when it came to gaming with headphones, holy hell, this thing surprised me. Um, normally, like when you plug these, this is the Epos, uh, Epos H6 Pro open back. Now I typically play this on cheaper DACs normally. Uh, it'll be connected to uh, the little Turtle Beach audio controller on an Xbox controller. I've connected this to the Astro Mix Amp um, directly into my PlayStation, etc. So I never really let them go to their full potential. When I plugged it into this, I couldn't believe how much better it sounded. Um, there's a really good headphone amp in here and it pairs really well with efficient headphones like the H6 Pro open back. Now, these are the Hi-Fi Men Aria Stealths. They're just they're under $2,000, but they're much more powerful planar magnetic headphones. Um, they benefit from more amplification. I could get close to full volume on this, um, 40 to 50, and it was really loud. I wouldn't listen to that for long periods of time, but it definitely took more juice to get those going compared to the H6 Pro. However, again, it still sounded really nice. Now, what's really cool is the fact that I can customize the soundbar's performance, both on the speaker side and on the output to my headphones. So I can do custom EQ. And if I wanna leave all the spatial audio processing off, I can, but I can boost bass. I can reduce highs or boost highs. There are so many equalizer presets, including Call of Duty, including Apex, including Cyberpunk. They update it and there's custom EQ presets for all of that that worked really well for both the soundbar and my headsets. Now, as uh, most audio presets go, I did not like the footsteps preset. It really messes with the sound, and uh, depending on the game you're playing, it can actually make it harder to hear footsteps um, because it gets a little bit more shrill or, or shrieky uh, sounding. So, mess around with the EQ. Now, the other thing you can do, there, so there's just, again, there are so many things that this has for customization. I can change the dialogue mode, so I can boost it so dialogue is louder. I can put this in night mode, so if you're concerned with audio at nighttime, it can greatly reduce the dynamic range. So if you're watching a movie in the evening, it doesn't mean you have to have bad sound quality, you can just have compressed sound quality. So voices sound better, they don't sound like a tin can coming from your speaker, but the explosions aren't gonna wake up your kids, for example, or your neighbor, or your significant other in the other room. Now what really makes the Katana V2 interesting is the audio mixer and microphone capabilities. So there's actually two microphones built into the Katana V2 with stereo imaging. So I'm gonna switch my voice to the sound, sound bar now. And this is what my voice sounds like on the Katana V2. It actually does a really nice job of picking up my audio and there's even ways to tune the way your voice sounds on the app. So if I go into the Katana V2 app and then I go onto the Crystal Voice, you can see right here, it shows microphone equalizer. 
and I have a preset. And then in this preset it says reduce base harshness, improve clarity. And I enable that while I'm talking to you. Again, I'm, I'm going to be talking to you on the sound bar while I do this part. Um, it says reduce bass, improve vocal. So let's go to that one. And this is what my sound, my voice sounds like on preset four. Improve clarity. This is what my voice sounds like on preset 10. And then the whole focus and wide angle thing. This is where um, it's basically rejecting more of your background noise. So the reverbs in the rooms, the clicks of your keyboard, etc. This is going to help reduce some of that with the focus mode. Um, but either way, that's the microphone built in. It sounds pretty awesome. So going into the rest of the app real quick, this is to me where it gets really cool. So you have sound mode, it says effects off. These are EQ presets right here that I can quickly select that will customize the output of either the speaker system or my headphones that are connected to it. Now, Super XFi, that's where it's taking the pictures from a separate app. Um, on, on this note, you can customize this via the software on your PC, which I strongly recommend. It's easier to use. There's actually a really nice Bluetooth app that works on Apple and Android. And then um, there's a separate app from the Sound Blaster side. So you have Creative for the audio setup, Sound Blaster for SXFi, which does the whole mapping of your ear. Once you've taken pictures and uploaded it, your profile is actually saved to the soundbar, so you don't have to deal with that app pretty much ever again. Acoustic Engine. So it's not enabled right now because I have all the effects turned off, but the surround feature is your virtual surround and phasing and time delay to make it, again, sound like the soundbar is larger than what it is. You can increase or decrease that effect. Crystallizer is to improve your vocal clarity of your voice. Smart volume is where you're providing compression, so it's not um, the loud parts of a movie or a game aren't as loud as um, they normally would have been. And conversely, softer noises are actually boosted. So instead of this wide frequency range or decibel range, it's making it all fit into a smaller window. And then Dialog Plus, as you do that and boost Dialog Plus, it helps with the mid range, but it's reducing uh, your bass and treble, other things that would take away from that. Equalizer, I have it turned off, but check this out. You can custom tune your EQ. There's a preamp control, your own bands, and look how easy it is to customize. This isn't the most sophisticated equalizer, but for people like me, if you have different presets right here, like look at all these. There's so many things I can customize, but when I set my preset, I can make it so I fit a particular headphone I always use and make that sound better or worse, and then I can boost bass separately from there and you can see how it's lifting that whole shelf on the lower frequencies. So going into, I mentioned Crystal Voice, that's again for your voice. Scout mode is, so here's where I, I get a little nitpicky. I don't really like the scout mode or the battle mode that much. It That's taking advantage of the SXFI processing to virtualize a sound stage and creating a holographic presentation in your head. It all sounds great, but I've never found one that works better than just really good stereo imaging, especially on the headphone side. Now these modes seem to work better, um, or the battle mode will work better on the speakers than it does on headphones for me. So it's certainly worth trying to, because your ears will work different than mine. You may like it or dislike it. The lighting is super cool. So I'm gonna turn this around. And right now you can see I have it set to morph from these two colors and I can change it to anything I want. Uh, the remote has some presets too, but this is to really customize it. Aurora is your blues and purples, which I typically leave it on. Uh, mood, seven strips or segments on the soundbar, and you can customize what each one is, and you can even make it so it's music reactive. So if this is playing music, you can have the explosions, make the RGB pulse, if you will. So there's a lot of different ways you can customize it. I'm not gonna go through every single one, but I think you get the idea on how this uh, works. So let's go back one more. Decoder, um, this is the compressor again, but on a simplified version. So if you have the decoder, it's going to automatically do dynamic compression on everything, regardless of what your other settings are. And then that night mode is really clutch. I wish there was a night mode on the remote because if you are using this like connected to a TV, you can enable it on your, um, app, your Bluetooth app. So if you're watching, you're using this in bed, you can still do it that way. And I believe you can customize it with the remote by assigning it a button down here for one of the C123 all the way to six. So we'll test that in a moment. The mixer is crazy. So the mixer can actually combine sources into one and change the volume levels. Um, 
So this actually has a game mixer built in it. You can change your microphone sensitivity. You can change the um, volume of, let's say, the game coming from optical versus aux. So again, these are like these little hidden features that I was like, holy crap, this is on a soundbar. Um, this is where you're seeing Creative and Sound Blaster's PC gaming experience come in. So it's kind of like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Clothing. It looks like a really clean, mature soundbar. Then you have all these awesome gamer features. So custom buttons. So let's talk about it. Let's see if I can find a good way to uh, enable this. So C1 commands. Uh, we could do set sound mode. Is there? Okay. So there's EQ. So I do not see a way to enable. You can do shortcuts for inputs, etc. So it's okay. It looks like the custom presets. Uh, or the C buttons are better used for uh, EQ presets, which I guess would be cool if you have different headphones um, that need different EQ or your favorite games that you play. Um, scout mode, mic monitoring, so you can hear yourself on your own mic, which is kind of nice. So no way to enable night mode without using the app. It is what it is. Not ideal to me, but um, that's the way it's set up. So that about wraps up the review. Normally I'm more structured than this, but honestly, uh, the amount of things this thing does and there is to know about it can be a bit overwhelming because I didn't even touch on every single spec in detail. Um, if I had to nitpick a few things, I already mentioned, I wish it had night mode on the remote. Um, I wish that the rubber feet were thicker because this sits so low on and flat on your desk. If your keyboard's in front of it, your cord has to basically go around, otherwise you're balancing it on a on the cord. So I would just get a few cheap rubber feet to lift the soundbar up slightly, and that'll help. Uh, overall sound quality is great. It's not going to be as good as a larger two-channel speaker with subs, because physically it's just not that large. It's very compact. This is definitely a viable contender to some of the other soundbar gaming products out there, but the big kicker with me is the sound performance especially when you factor in the mixer and the headphone performance. It is such a smoking package when you factor all that together. And I had an amazing time playing on this, way better than I expected. I don't know if I'm coming across animated or unorganized or not, but uh, this thing really surprised me for the good, for the better. And it's even just a little attention to detail thing. So when I, I tested this without blowing my eardrums out because I paused the music, I put my headphones up to volume 40. Now, a common thing that happens with amplifiers is you unplug the headphone, then all of a sudden your amp is crazy loud and your speakers are either getting blown or blowing your eardrums or just very, very loud and uncomfortable. Uh, this will maintain independent volume settings for both. So when I unplugged my headphones, it went back to volume level 12. So I wasn't worried about um, destroying my ears or waking everybody up because I unplugged it accidentally. So it's those little things like that that stand out and it shows that their experience in making products like this uh, really come through because um, those are the things you live with every single day. So uh, that about wraps up the review. I hope you found it helpful and you learned something new about this thing. Um, I really like it. If you're in the market for a soundbar around this price or you're looking for something different to go on your desk that has a really clean aesthetic, uh, this is like a great pairing. A soundbar like this with the Epos A6 Pro, Creative does make headphones and headsets, by the way. I just know that this H6 Pro open back worked so well on this, it seriously blew me away. Um, that this whole setup's like 500 bucks, and now you have great speakers and headphones and a good way to game on PC. The USB cable even works on a PS5, so you get just so much flexibility with this. But anyway, that wraps up the review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I have a lot of other gaming and audio stuff coming out. Uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter as well. Still trying to grow that. With that being said, thank you again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.